I'm Steve Guterman from Paradigm Experts, and we are estate buyers and private jewelers. Today, we are located at the Howard County Miller Library Branch, and we're for the Historical Society, and we are conducting our appraisal roadshow. We're going to discuss three things with everybody. What do they have? What's it worth? And we perhaps may discuss some strategies of what they may want to consider doing with them. Uh, my name, like I said, is Todd Peenstra. Now, there are three ways that you're going to interact with me. Number one is I help. Number two, what's it worth? We're going to talk about two values. We're going to have wholesale value and retail value. So, we've identified it. We've told you what it's worth. What's the third thing you need to know, ma'am? Where do you go? Where do you go to sell it, right? You need to know, go to a dealer? Do you go to an auction? If so, which dealer? Which auction? That's critical. This is your ring, right? What did you know about it? it it's a new piece, that's correct. And it would look like it's in the 70s, certainly, maybe uh, as high as the early 80s. Um, it's just a free form. It's uh, 14 karat yellow gold. It is marked. Um, I had, uh, you, you, had in, you, I guess, inherited the piece or have accumulated the piece. And I'm going to give two values on everything. One is an insurance price. An insurance value would be kind of an aggressive piece, assuming, hey, we really can't replace it because it's a 1970s piece. Where the heck are we going to get it? Um, and number two is a sale price. If you're trying to sell it today, what could you expect to get for it? And we discussed this ahead of time. What did we decide the, the appraisal would be? The uh, total carat weight of this is over a carat. And they are modern rounds. Uh, if I was insuring this piece, insuring this piece, I would want to have this thing insured for about $2,500. If I was trying to cash it in, I said, you know what, I want some money for this thing. I'm going to put a value of it of approximately 1000 bucks. First thing I want to do is I test the bronze to see if it's bronze, right? We get my ma trusty magnet out. And if you guys are buyers, it's always good to have a magnet if you collect metals. It's always good to have this. It's just a, and it doesn't stick, so we know it's bronze. I looked for a signature. It's not signed, is it? No. Yeah, I didn't see anything anywhere. There's some numbers or something on the bottom. Yeah, there are some numbers. Probably a, the, whoever made it, that's their reference number to the maker. But we don't, don't really know who made it. I believe, I've seen these before. I think it's Deco, Art Deco. So I think it's 1920s or so. So early 20th century. Um, and still usable for, you know, cigarette items. There's people that collect bronzes, that collect elephants, and collect cigarette items. So it's saleable on a number of different a avenues. I think you could sell it for 125 I think you could um, insure it for 350 And the Bulova is interesting because the Bulova is 14 karat. So watch like this. It is working. You have about a $500 watch. Not bad. That is what you would expect to receive for it. I think that you are, if I was insuring it, I'd insure it for twice that. So what it is, the first thing I look at, I did the magnet test. Now the magnet doesn't stick to it, but the other thing that we do is you try to lift it up. Now believe me, if this was solid bronze, as, uh, as, as husky as I am, um, I wouldn't be able to lift it up. It'd be too heavy. But you see how light that is? So it's a base metal. So it's a copy, it's a restrike. Now it is signed on the back, Rousseau. Uh, but it's a restrike. It's sort of a, it's a copy of a Rousseau. So this particular model, you could sell it for about $150. It still has value, and it would retail for about $350. If it was a true Rousseau from the late 19th century, it'd be worth 10 times that amount. But unfortunately, it's a restrike. But very interesting. I mean, the patina's good on it. It's in good condition. It's a great fashion piece. And what do we know about this guy? It's an old Wallum. It is in spectacular condition. Condition is everything with these watches. This one looks absolutely fantastic. And on the, on the back, it just so happens to have an engraving. And what did we figure out at what said? It's from what year? 1878. Uh -huh. And it was given as a 21st birthday present from his mother and father. How's that? Isn't that cool? And then it has a little tiny thing over here, and I don't know what that means. 18 KT? So we've tested this, and indeed it is 18 karat gold. 
but I want you to see the detail in here. It is just beautiful. So, uh, moment of truth. What is this thing worth? If I was putting it as an, a Waltham, Waltham certainly is a uh, nice watch. I would put it in the Buick category if I was trying to, to put it as far as cars. The condition on this is absolutely spectacular. Keep in mind this is 1878. And as a 21st birthday, I don't know what your 21 year olds are like. I tell you, I have a pair of 27s. That thing would never have stayed in that condition <laughs> at all. <laughs> right, right. Um, if I was insuring this watch, I would want it insured for $4,000. If you were trying to sell it, that watch is going to sell all day long for the low 2000s. How's that? That is a pretty darn good watch. It has been a lot of fun once again. It's always fun for the Historical Society because you folks actually have a lot of cool stuff and knowledge, which is fun for us. We're here if I didn't get to anything or you have something else that you want me to look at, we're here for you. Thanks again. <laughs>